Welcome to another Laravel tutorial here on the channel. In this video we will learn how to implement a payment gateway that accepts cryptocurrencies using Now Payments API. I have made a new account here and let's go and see the dashboard that you will get when you create the new account. It has a lot of features like payment history and if you want to generate a payment link so people can pay you through that link. And in the settings payment you will add your wallet to receive the crypto currency on it. And also there is a lot of settings you can check them when you want, but the most important thing is to create a new API key, and I have already created one, next let's see the documentation for the APIs so we can use it. It will take us to a Postman documentation which is great so we can test it using Postman later, and here we can read whatever we want about the APIs, there is code samples also using curl so we can test it in our code later, and this is how we can set up our code to integrate with the APIs, and they are explaining the flow of the now payments API and that's great, now let's try and test it. If we press run in Postman that is located on the top right corner we will be able to download the collection and use it in Postman, I have already did this so let's go to Postman and start testing it, first let's try the authentication endpoint, in the body we will pass our email and password, and then if we press send the authentication token will be generated and according to the documentation this token is only alive for 5 minutes. Now let's try to get another endpoint which is the get available currencies one, I have already passed it my API key so you need to generate one and pass it to the headers, and then if we press send we will get the currencies with the minimum amount and maximum amount that we can send from each one and that's great. Now if we want to check the minimum payment for a specific currency we can use the min amount endpoint and pass it the currency and we will get the minimum amount and the fiat. Equivalent, let's also try it for Solana for example and it is working and that's great, next let's try create a new invoice for payment, the postman collection that we installed already has a sample of how the request should be and it is in the body, and if we press send we will create a new invoice with the invoice URL. If we go to this URL we will go to the payment page where we will first choose the currency that we want to pay with and then we will have a timer so the price of the currency will be stable, and with a QR code to pay using it, and that's it for creating a new invoice using the invoice endpoint, next we will try to make a new payment using the create payment gateway. Just like the invoice one we already have a sample of how the body should look, so now let's try it and press send, and we will. Get all the data of the payment that we just created, with a status of waiting because we didn't pay yet, now if we take the ID of that payment and try it in the get payment status endpoint, we will get the status of the payment which is waiting with all the data, if we go back to the documentation we will find all the statuses of the payment with explanation for each one. And on the right we will find the curl code for this endpoint. Now let's see the controller that I made to integrate the endpoints that we just tried into a Laravel application using curl, the first function is get available currencies, this function is designed to retrieve a list of all the available cryptocurrencies that now payment supports for payments. First we will set the API endpoint using a variable called URL, then we will initialize curl session using curl init, and then we will set curl options, the first line sets the URL to fetch. And the second ensures that the result is returned as a string of the return value of curl execute instead of outputting it directly, and the third one sets the necessary HTTP headers for the request, including the API key which is retrieved from the environment variables. Then we will execute the prepared curl session. The result is stored in response variable, then we will check for curl errors, and finally we will close the curl session to free up resources. If there was an error, it returns a JSON response with the error message and a 500 status code. If no error occurred, the JSON response from an OW payments is decoded into a PHP array and returned as a JSON response. And that's it for the first function, now let's see the create invoice function, this function is designed to create an invoice through the now payments API and store the invoice details in the database. The function collects necessary data from the request object. 
This data includes the price amount, price currency, order ID, order description, callback URLs, and other relevant information. As with the first function, we will initialize a new curl session. And then setting curl options similar to the previous function, but with additional settings for post data, then we will execute it and then check for any errors, and then we will close the curl session. Then a new invoice model instance is created and populated with the relevant data from invoice data, and then saved to the database. And finally the function returns the decoded invoice data as a JSON response. Next we will see the get payment status, it is very similar to the first one so I will not explain it a lot I will just go through the code, and then we will see the list payments function, this function retrieves a list of all payments from now payments. And also it is similar to the last function so I will just go through the code, and finally we need to register our routes in the API file like this, and that's it for today's video, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.